would you survive the Squid Games? No. No, you wouldn't. You'd die. But could you train to increase your chances of surviving it? When I saw Netflix's new hit show, that exact thought crossed my mind. You see, when I watch things, I have the unfortunate problem of looking at all things through two lenses. One, a writer. Yeah, that's right. I went to school for that shiz. I have a degree in creative writing. Your mind blown yet? And two, a trainer. With years of experience, I've come to understand what the average person is capable of. Any show that challenges the average person like Squid Games does causes me to wonder how I'd handle the situation as a trainer. So the premise we'll run with is this. I've been instructed to train one of the VIP's picks. Let's call it a perk they've earned since the frontman clearly isn't above messing with things behind the scenes, especially when a VIP makes noise. How would I approach it? Well, if it was Song Wu, I'd let him die. Anyhow, let's break it down. The closest thing I can think of when it comes to preparation for this one is football training, specifically for someone like a wide receiver or running back or tight end. The idea here is that speed really isn't enough. Agility to dodge fallen players and stop on a dime will be crucial. For that reason, I do a significant amount of agility work and sprints with regular days spent actually sprinting and hitting a full stop. You have to practice the actual task in order for someone to get better at it, otherwise the whole thing's pointless. Welcome to the first luck checkpoint. You could argue this takes forearm strength, but I'd argue otherwise. I think everyone has the skill and strength necessary to tackle this one. Nobody in the game was like, but sir, my weak wrists. So yeah, this one you might just have to hope for the best on, unless your tongue game is on point, in which case I, I can't help you, but feel free to uh, help yourself. This one is classic, even here in North America, and brings with it a very classic approach to training. The first hurdle will be your forearms. Everything depends on your ability to keep holding onto the rope. If you can't do that, everything else falls apart. The next areas of focus would be the back and biceps. Obviously, this is a pull motion, and pull exercises will be highly valuable in this scenario. I'd select rows, both bent over and standing cable rows, single arm and dual arm, and dead hangs for the forearms. Deadlifts would also help here since you need grip strength to hold the bar. I'd also work in some core work in the form of a pull-off press since you'll be attempting to fight and generate rotational force at some point during this. The Midnight Fight. Ooh, this one is interesting. This one is something you can train for with a basic resistance training program focused on strength and power. I'd focus on the basic lifts with some calisthenics worked in, but I'd also add the extra caveat of doing it all fasted and, if possible, in the middle of the night after staying up super late and being exhausted every so often. The idea being, I want you strong, but I want you used to physical exertion while at the limits of your energy and focus. How else can you defend from these lunatics all night? Two things to address here. One, there is a significant element of luck involved. You could end up playing a game based on chance like the main character, or even be tricked out of all your shit if you're not lucky. That's right, Songwoo. I see you. I see you, you piece of shit. That being said, the scumbag gangster proved you can manipulate things to change the game since, quote, everyone is even. So there is a good chance it could end up coming down to skill in the end. Two, the skills needed for this are mostly about hand-eye coordination. We can train for this. Score. The easiest way I can think to do that would be to use a reaction ball. Basically, it's a ball with uneven or lumpy sides so that when it's thrown on the ground, it bounces irregularly. This means the person who has to catch it has to react very quickly using hand-eye coordination to quickly judge where the ball is going to go and catch it. Doing this regularly throughout the week will allow them to get better with their hand-eye coordination, which then they can use to translate into the marbles game when they get to that point in the actual Squid Games.
The actual act is something you can't train for here. It's all luck. You can, however, train your memory while under duress. This isn't in the wheelhouse of a trainer at all, but if someone who was in the games asked me to, not you, Song Woo, I'd oblige. But I would let them know as such, especially if it was Ali. Best boy deserves all the help. Like he survives at this point anyways, god damn it. <laughs> This is the final test. Here we have a classic type children's game mixed with a death match. First, you have a luck checkpoint with the coin flip to decide if you're on the offense or defense. So we can't specifically prepare for either one. It would have to be both. Second, this is going to devolve into a fight. So after some point, normal resistance training will become less useful than just martial arts and hand-to-hand -hand combat training. That being said, we will tackle what is in our scope. First, plyometrics. You'll need this on offense to more successfully reach your Inspector Royale moment. Next, sled pushes and pulls. There's a chance that just pushing and pulling your opponent will be a part of all this, especially if they want to do this without having to murk you themselves. Last but not least, cardio. Many fights go south for someone because they gas out early and can't keep fighting. You'll need great cardio to help you last the duration of the battle, and it will likely be a hard one. Those preparations should give someone enough of an edge to massively boost their chances of winning the grand prize. Of course, depending on how much time I'd have to train them. If it's not long enough, it's not really going to help them too much. This was a new kind of video, a little different from normal, so let me know if you enjoyed it by liking, commenting, and sharing it. If this does well, I might consider making it a series on the channel. Are there any training methods or techniques that you could think of that would really boost someone's chance of surviving the Squid Games? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, stay shining, because the galaxy can only be a bright and beautiful place if we all shine together. Peace.